Good evening, hello and welcome to the special broadcast of Anusha Soni. The tussle between the Tamil Nadu governor Arun Ravi and the DMK government is indeed not a new one. On various occasions, the government has questioned the conduct of the present governor to the extent that the government complained against the governor to the president of India. Today, all hell broke loose at the Tamil Nadu Assembly when the governor omitted few words from his speech. Conventionally, that speech was given by the government to the governor. Chief Minister M.K. Stalin, in the presence of the governor, went ahead and proposed a resolution against the governor. Amidst the standoff, the governor staged a walkout of the session before it was complete. These were unprecedented scenes in many ways. For a governor to refuse to read uh, the speech made by the government and omit words at his own discretion. For a chief minister to move a resolution against the governor in his presence. Well, all of this has been simmering for far too long. The governor has been sitting on key bills. He has been accused of misusing his office. And on the other hand, the governor has also taken repeated jibes at the present DMK government and the Dravidian model. This standoff has led to almost a breakdown of the constitutional machinery and a delicate balance between the two constitutional functionaries. Politics, once again, is derailing policy in the state of Tamil Nadu. We explore all these angles on the biggest exclusive today. Let us say Tamilagam is more appropriate. Protest is to uh, express our uh, displeasure uh, against uh, Mr. R. N. Ravi. He is uh, just a spokesperson of the RSS. His uh, view as regards Tamil Nadu and Tamilagam. Uh, in the context that he used is really bothering the opposition parties. Well, as I earlier said, the politics has on repeated occasions der derailed the policy in the state of Tamil Nadu. What have been the key flash, flash points? Let's take you through some incidents one by one because clearly this is not the first time that the two constitutional functionaries are not in sync with each other. While the Coimbatore blast, the governor questioned the delay by the state government. It was also said that why it has taken so long for an NIA probe to be ordered. The governor went ahead and said this is clearly something which is not good for the national security and the government should have been far more serious on this entire matter. So that was a key flashpoint that had emerged uh, when the Coimbatore blast had happened between the governor and the DMK government. Let's move on. The NEAT bill, this has been one of the key flashpoints between the government and the governor. The governor had returned the bill seeking to dispense NEAT-based admissions. NEAT, of course, is a very emotive issue in the state of Tamil Nadu. Uh, the state passes a second bill to the medical uh, admissions on plus two scores. And more importantly, this was an assertion by the state government that you've sent the bill back, but we are reasserting, so you have to follow it. Now, meet and greet snap. In April 2022, the government had skipped there was a reception uh, at, at the governor's home and usually at these ceremonial functions or even invitations, usually the politicians and the governors oblige each other. That was not done. Chief Minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin, he skipped the reception amid the neat bill face-off. So this time, this was one occasion where the tensions were at an all-time high. The appointment of the Vice Chancellor, the bill empowering state to appoint VC was passed in April 2022. The bill sought to take power back from the Governor and give it into the hands of the Chief Minister. Move after the Governor appointed VCs to about three state universities and more importantly it was argued that the state government was not taken into confidence. Similar controversy was seen in Kerala as well. Now the Sanatan Dharma praise on the cultural agenda that DMK and the Governor are on completely different pages and he has taken repeated pot shots at the Dravidian politics. The state has objected to governor's invocation of Sanatan Dharma. The governor had said that the entire of the country and whatever we have done so far is a byproduct of Sanatan Dharma. In June, the governor said that Sanatan Dharma has built India and this is a fact that we should acknowledge. This praise by the governor did not go down well with the DMK government. The pending bills has been a huge issue. Well, the uh, criticism is that if the governor is not satisfied with the, with the bills, he should send it back to the government. Why do you sit on the bills? Because it creates a policy paralysis. 
about 20 bills have been passed by the assembly they are pending with the raj bhavan and so far there has been no movement on it this is one of the key flash point the bills including anti neat ban on online gambling all of these are very critical bills from the economy and from the policy point of view now this entire controversy of tamil nadu versus tamiligam what should be the correct name the governor suggested the changing the change of the name of the state to tamiligam saying that nadu represents some kind of country or secessionist tendencies and we need to change that this did not go down well with the government and that was the argument that was raised so once again the key question that we ask is that governor versus the government good that this entire flashpoint has emerged maybe it is good for a healthy discussion but as far as the policy point of view is concerned for the governor to sit on 20 bills and not really return them to the government for a sitting chief minister to pass a resolution in the state assembly almost insulting the governor uh, and the governor to walk out of the assembly all of those are scenes which are not healthy for any kind of democracy. Well, disagreements may be, but this kind of workout is clearly something which is very, very problematic. What is the logical solution to this entire political stalemate? Now, joining us on the broadcast uh, is our full panel. We are expecting Mr. Narayan Tirupati from the BJP to join us in just a bit. We also have Mr. A. Sarvanan, who is the spokesperson of the DMK, Mr. Suman C. Raman, who is a political analyst, and Mr. P. K. D. Nambiar, who is a political analyst. Good evening to all of you. Thank you so much for joining us on the broadcast. Um, and uh, I, I also want to take this question to Raj Lakshmi Joshi as well, political analyst. She is also joining us on the broadcast. Good evening, Raj Lakshmi ji. Um, coming to you, Mr. Sarvanan, first to you, because you yeah. are the, you're the elected government of the day. When we have the BJP representative, I am certainly going to ask him uh, questions about the conduct of the governor and is that really befitting of the conduct of the governor. But was it appropriate for the chief minister in the presence of the governor to propose a resolution against him? Did that befit the office of the CM? Mr. Savan. Yes, yes, uh, because the governor has violated the convention. Hmm. It is the convention. There is no codified law about the way yeah, yeah, what the governor you. should say, but this is the convention. We follow the British parliamentary model where conventions hold sway. Hmm. So the governor, by refusing to entirety read out the address, which he has signed earlier, so uh, he breached that convention. That has prompted the chief minister to move a resolution. The governor refused to name the leaders hmm. of Tamil Nadu who were instrumental, who are in the hearts of all Tamilians. Hmm. Tandai Periyar, Karmavirar, Kamarajar, Perarinjar, Anna, Talevar, Kalanjar, these four stalwarts of the state of Tamil Nadu. Hmm. The governor refused to name them. What more insult can he do to the Tamils hmm. in the state of Tamil Nadu? And he has refused there to are, use the there word. Are, there are certain model. occasions. No, I, I, I take your point. Government. I take your point. There are certain occasions in parliamentary democracy or in our democratic conventions, as you rightly say, that conventions hold a lot of importance. Uh, that the party politics or the petty politics is given, you know, a go by. It's the position of the governor, it's the sitting chief minister. These are dignitaries and pos positions which are supposed to respect each other in the public domain to strike that intricate constitutional balance. With the conduct of the governor and the government, I think both that, that, that balance has been thrown off. Mr. Sarvanan. No, no, there is no, the balance has not been thrown out. Uh, the reaction, it is just a reaction to what the governor did. Hmm. This is not done by the DMK government unilaterally. This is done as a reaction to the way the governor has been acting and what business he has hmm. to cut out. See, stealth and cunning does not form part of high constitutional office. Hmm. That is what the governor is practicing. Hmm. He uh, signed the address without any problem and two days later he comes and speaks something else hmm. how can you allow this in a constitutional democracy the constitution is supreme hmm. the governor throws the constitution to the winds he's taking diktats from the rss he's a stooge of the rss that is the problem he may he may like whatever ideology he wants but that is not the place the pulpit the pulpit of the governor's office is not mr. the place mr. To Narayan Tirupati, mr narayan tirupati is also with us on the broadcast mr tirupati Good evening, thank you for joining us. I was having a word with Mr. A.S. Sarvanan and I asked him the same question that I'm going to ask you. That does it really befit the office of the governor to omit certain words from the speech? The speech is conventionally a statement from the gov uh, government that the governor is supposed to read out and the manner in which certain omissions were made by the governor. The DMK argues it is completely against the convention. He ought not have done that. Oh, there are residences uh, for this and uh, I, I can tell you uh, the governor has done the right thing 
by uh, omitting or uh, not reading certain things because it does uh, they have the government government has fortified the government has tried to uh, create a sort of controversies through this uh, speeches so the governor has got each and every right to hide a false propaganda or lies hmm. so it is is a constitutional authority he is the constitutional authority hmm. he is the head of the state and today he was presiding the uh, you know uh, the chair and uh, the legislative assembly and under his uh, chairmanship this was happening no and, uh, how can you but but mr the, no mr expect? but mr tirupati substantiate that for me what was the uh, propaganda all, you need what take, you, need, you need to you need to take what i am saying and then No, no, sir, okay. sir. Uh, the re- so I, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you the reason you for my interjection. No, no, sir. I'll give you the, I'll give you the reason for my interjection. The argument of the DMK is that you know there were certain words. I'm going to read out those words. Uh, Tamil Nadu, Dravidian model, social justice, self-respect. These are words which are harmless without any controversy. So where is the propaganda? No, no. Is what I'm trying to understand from you, sir. No, no. That is the, that is that is from the words of the DMK spokesperson. Huh. And in fact, uh, they have uh, the the speech. Uh, the government has lied that Tamil Nadu is peaceful. Tamil Nadu doesn't have any problem. Law and order problem is not there, and all those things. See, Tamil Nadu has got a law, a lot of law and order problems, right? So the, the, there is nothing called the Dravida model, which is a myth. and there is a no dravid uh, model happening in tamil nadu why should the governor be the governor has got the right it, it is not a, a law and it is not a rule or it is not in constitution that whatever the uh, state government is asked the government uh, the governor has to read he is he has presided today mm. and in front of him the alliance parties of dmk were instigated by dmk provoked by these people and they were shouting and yelling at the governor this is shameful act a shameful act by the dmk alis hmm. then number 2 the dmk was shocked by the excellent speech of a governor in tamil hmm. which they never expected because they have they have been doing politics on language but the governor who had read every inch and everything in tamil the dmk got up got sent back so they have tried to mr you know, mr tirupati mr governor. tirupati you number you three, are a... let me finish yes. number 3 yes, finish number 3 let me finish huh. when the governor finished his speech There is, it is not the business of Mr. Stalin, the Chief Minister, to go against the law, to remove a motion against the governor who is presiding. See, that is unconstitutional and unlawful. So well, the governor walked like a roaring lion in front of these people. There is nothing. Mr. Wrong Mr. Tirupati, Mr. Tirupati, I I will reiterate that question and then I'll move on to other guests. Uh, what was wrong in saying the word Dravidian model when the governor was making that speech? And and there is one more argument that the DMK is making. Like you are saying that it's unconstitutional for the chief minister to move in a resolution when governor was present in the house. They argue it is uh, beyond convention. It is against the convention that whatever speech the government has given to the governor, he deletes not words from his own from his own discretion. That's not allowed. Not yes. not necessarily. That's what I am saying. You say something wrong. The governor, in his capacity, his capacity has got the every the right. to omit or uh, you know uh, to erase whatever he wants that is his right and that is his duty he will do it he is a constitutional authority okay i i want to i wrong, want to bring in mr suman si raman as well mr raman unprecedented <coughs> scenes at the assembly today and the manner in which the governor made his address was not something that went down well with the dmk and and they said we want to move a resolution against it how do you see what happened today in the assembly very unfortunate because mm. let's face it this is not the governor's address it is the address of the duly elected government made in the assembly on behalf of the government by the head of the government who is the governor mm. so let's be very clear this is not like the governor would write up a speech and give it it's not that way at all the convention is that the state government prepares the speech and unless there is something which is unconstitutional or something there i think the 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 role of the governor is to read it out hmm. now the you, he may not agree with the contents of the speech but then it is known to everybody that he is merely reading out the speech of the state government it's hmm. not that people are going to associate uh, mr arun ravi with the content of the speech hmm. it is the speech of the state government so why is he trying to look what would what was wrong if he had said dravidian model it hmm. doesn't mean arun ravi as an individual agrees with the dravidian model he has already made speeches where he has disagreed with that yeah. that's his problem yeah. as the as the head of the state 
it is his responsibility to do what the duly elected government at least on this occasion had asked him to do which is read out a speech hmm. there was nothing unconstitutional in saying dravidian model has done this or in calling tamil nadu a, a haven of peace so i i am sorry i just don't agree and also the walk out was in bad yes perhaps the chief minister could have waited and moved the resolution later after the governor had left hmm. but then the governor walking out before the national anthem was played hmm. now how uh, how does the how, what kind of uh, impression does that give so i'm sorry i mean i i i i sort of tend to agree with what the state government has uh, uh, put out here if he had a problem and he uh, the, the rajbhavan sources did tell me that they have articulated um, their concerns on some of the words and languages used in the in the speech hmm. and had sent it uh, uh, to the government on 7 hmm. but that does not absolve them uh, absolve them or the governor yeah. of the fact that this is a constitutional duty which he is discharging on behalf of the duly elected government hmm. and as long as there was nothing unconstitutional in the speech hmm. or something that violated the constitution hmm. there was no need at all for the governor to uh, edit and play the role of a censor as far as that speech was concerned so i think it is in bad uh, it is it is not appropriate uh, so mr raman when it when it comes to this entire tension which has been simmering between the chief minister's office and the governor's office somewhere this was in the making uh you know the kind of stand off that we have seen bills which have not been cleared by the governor's office the complaint that has been made to the president president against the governor so the kind of scenes that we saw they were in the making for a while but are there historical constitutional precedents where the governors have changed this uh, speech or the address which they are supposed to deliver on behalf of the government without the approval of the government oh, oh yes oh yes i mean it's it's now unfortunately it is becoming fairly routine to do this okay. uh, a few years ago when justice sadashivam former chief justice of india was the governor of kerala yeah uh, he he sort of uh, edited out uh, certain sentences which were critical of the uh, union government in mm. the in the governor's address mm. of course at that time kerala was was as is the present ruled by uh, the left front government mm. again Uh, in andhra we had the example of uh, the andhra governor editing out certain bits about references to three different capital cities yeah we had mr jagdeep dankar who was heckled uh, by tmc um, you know in the house yeah. and actually reading one sentence and uh, walking out without uh, completing his speech hmm. so we had uh, you know we had uh, mr koshiari in uh, in maharashtra during the previous government hmm. so this is becoming a fairly uh, frequent Routine. happening yeah. Yeah. which is very very unfortunate hmm. because i think that and and mind you it only happens in opposition rule states why is this no, problem but but to be but to be the devil's state? advocate here rajalakshmi joshi coming to you is the governor supposed to be just reading a teleprompter and not exercising his own mind when it comes to reading of that speech it is true that he is representing the will of the government and enlisting what the government has achieved in all that span but if there is a portion that the governor disagrees with he should be allowed to do so Yes, definitely, Anusha. That is exactly what I was going to say, and uh, you almost uh, stole my words. Hmm. You know uh, what I want to say is that the governor is nobody's puppet, so he is not expected to be just simply parroting out some uh, lines and some words that have been given to him. Yeah, he is there for a reason. He is somebody who is going to be keeping everything in check. He, hmm. you know, uh, this is this is his uh, duty. <clears throat> and uh, he is doing exactly that he has certain reservations with certain words and he chose to omit it hmm. uh, he has uh, strongly objected to the use of the word uh, dravidian model in the past hmm. and uh, uh, i've seen nothing wrong if he uh, chose not to uh, say that uh, during uh, you know his statement hmm. so that i i don't see anything wrong in that the, the thing is that uh, there, there is this constant confrontational attitude of uh, certain governments mm. certain state governments when mm. they have uh, you know this uh, somebody trying to keep a check on them or questioning them like you have in delhi like you have uh, in telangana and you have in tamil nadu mm. you have this you know this, this is happening on a very regular basis the confrontational and, attitude and, and, and mr mr sarvan coming, coming, coming to you mr sarvan and coming to you there are multiple instances that uh mr suman si raman uh, you know enlisted and it's happening in the opposition rule states it is true that the governor is supposed to read out a statement that has been prepared by the government and enlist the achievements of the government and the word of the government but if the governor has a tone of dissent or something that he doesn't agree with 
he can make those corrections. Why adopt that confrontational tone and attitude on the floor of the house? We saw the kind of sloganeering that was happening by various leaders of the DMK. Mr. Sarvanar. See, any, yeah, yeah. See, if the governor is going to uh, make corrections <coughs> in the speeches, I think that is clearly illegal. Hmm. The constitution does not mandate the governor to act on his own discretion. The governor does not have any discretion in the constitutional scheme of things. He is merely a puppet, a rubber stamp, a postman, a S man to the government elected by the who is he? He is the only constitutional authority who is nominated. Mr. Sarvanan, can, can I just bring in one elected. perspective here? Can I just bring in one perspective here? You can make your argument. The office yeah. of the governor under Indian constitution is of such a high authority and respect that even a Supreme Court cannot issue notice to the office of a governor. More importantly, uh, the governor's office and the duties and the role have not been defined because it was expected that governor and its office will act as the custodian of constitutional propriety. That being said, I'm not denying that the governor's office can be misused for political reasons, but for you to call it a rubber stamp is exaggeration of another sort, Mr. Sarvanath. See, yes, when I say a rubber stamp, I'm not meaning literally he's a rubber stamp. I'm just meaning the duties he's performing. He has to, he's a S master. He has to merely affix his signature to what the cabinet sends. See, the Supreme Court. Time again, time and again, especially in the case of Nabam Rabia, as clearly mentioned, they compared that with the uh, Government of India Act and say the Government of India Act, there was discretion. But mm. the framers of our constitution uh, took that way in 175, Article 175 and 176, there is no discretion for the governor. Mm. They have to, because there is an elected government, mm. he has to merely act as per the advice of the Council of Ministers. Mm. Mm. And mm. as pointed out, the governor should not have walked out without the national anthem being played. Hmm. He has insulted the national anthem. Hmm. You said, yes, the Supreme Court says time and again said it's a high constitutional office. Hmm. But Mr. Ravi, is he holding, is he worth of holding that Mr. high constitutional Mr. office? Mr. Tirupati, what is business has the governor the got to do to suggest a name change for the state of Tamil Nadu and say, you know, they should have another name? There are repeated statements which have been made by the governor, which are controversial, and DMK says that a constitutional office like a governor should not be making statements of this nature. The walkout before the national anthem is something everybody is objecting to. Mr. Tirupati. No, no, no. See, the national anthem was not sung that time, and it was... It was Sir, not in you should have waited. That, uh, the... You should have waited. No, no, no. See, you, you have don't waited. advise the governor. You are no one to advise the governor. And your chief minister is no one to you know, bring motion against uh, the governor. Okay, he was he was presiding the assembly today. You should understand that. You know, you have insulted the entire people of Tamil Nadu, India. You have India. insulted the that governor. Don't support him, sir. Don't support him. You support you support nationalism. Okay. One, one, one person at a time. One person at a time. Mr. Tirupati, Mr. Tirupati, please go ahead, Mr. Sarvanan. I'll come to you and give you the time. Mr. Tirupati, go ahead. Yeah. So see, both the Tamil Nadu and Tamil Nadu are same. What Mr. R. N. Ravi said. Tamil Nadu means certain people, including the DMK, thinks that they are separate countries. Even the Chief Minister, Mr. M.K. Stalin, has very openly said in recent days that still the Dravida Nadu, that is a separate country, slogan is open, wide open. So, Mr. Ravi was saying, why not we call Tamil Nadu as Tamil Nadu? There is nothing wrong. Even Mr. Stalin's Twitter handle was carrying Tamil Nadu till day before yesterday. Suddenly, they have changed it. Last uh, now, first January in uh, Mr. Karanamani's memorial, they, they have placed a very big breath there. Having you know, uh, no, but, but Mr. Tirupati, if there was not, not if there was no political no, yeah, maturity so that was showed by I'm the DMK, I can argue the same for the governor's office. There could have Anusha, been some more political Anusha, maturity before that workout. Anusha, I think now you have understood. I think you have made the nail. The thing is that the, uh, the governor is speaking in Tamil which is irritating uh, the DMK people. That is what the main thing. Because they have been doing language politics. They have been lang doing language politics. They said the governor is a BRE. They said that the governor... All right, Mr. 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 Sarvanan, Mr. Yeah, Sarvanan, yeah, yeah. a quick yeah, response from you. Then I want to bring in Mr. Raman and Raju Yes, yes, yes Mr. Sarvanan. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. See, the worst, the, the most uh, worrisome aspect is that the BJP and the RSS, who falsely always wears their nationalism on the sleeve, is not condemning the behavior of the governor. They are supporting the governor who has insulted the national anthem. He should have waited. 
he is a constitutional dignitary he should have followed all those norms and the shamelessly the bjp and the rss is coming out and supporting the governor who insulted the national anthem this is their nationalism this is how they protect our national symbols and the bjp which always claims that they are better than everybody when it comes to nationalism falls short by their own standard false standard they have set for themselves Mr. Suman Sri Raman, I want to come to you. The walkout by the governor before the national anthem is something which is being played by the DMK. Yeah, I, th I think that he should not have walked out. I think yeah. that whatever be the provocation, hmm. he should have stayed yeah, on. And no. after, no, sir, you can't walk out before the national anthem, no, sir. No, you are no, a no, constitutional no, authority. Okay, sir. Ah, he will bring a motion against him, against the chap, and you, you expect. Sir, you are not. Back, sir, it is. Back.
minus the political affiliations is always welcome from a constitutional functionary. But what has been happening in the state of Tamil Nadu has been simmering for far too long. There is a policy paralysis that has seeped into the state and that's something that perhaps need to be looked into. Whether an intervention from the president's office as DMK had demanded or perhaps something to be done by the center on all of that. I thank all my guests for joining us on the broadcast. It's a wrap on this edition. Shivani Gupta joins you with Plain Speak.